time you get there. It's in this enough document that you might be next. We're turning to the 15th chapter. And as I'm, re as I'm getting ready to prepare my heart, I ask that you prepare your heart. You all that have not prayed for me, I'm asking that you whisper a prayer. We know that it doesn't take a long prayer. You just say, hope Jesus. Amen. You know, it's a short prayer. Um, you all know that I come from a line of talkers. That includes Pastor Brown. And so um, I'm going to just hold your attention for a moment. Okay? So in the 15th chapter of Luke, we're going to read the first verse, and then we're going to skip all the way down to the 25th. The first verse says, Then drew near unto them all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Second verse, and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Mm -hmm. Now put your finger on 25, you're going to go there. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother has come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and entreated him. And he said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meant that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, all right. and was lost, uh, and now found. Amen. May amen. the Lord have a blessing upon the glory of the word. Amen. Uh -huh. If I had a title for this message, it would be called The Other Brother Amen. or The Other Sister. Amen. Most of you have heard the parable of the prodigal son, but what is rarely talked about is the older brother. Amen. In the Gospel of Luke, all the parables speak about something that was lost. A lost sheep, a lost coin, and a prodigal son. The sheep was found, the coin was found, and the son was found. As we read through the scriptures, we see God's compassion for all his creation. Yes. In the parable of the prodigal son, the main focus is on the story of the lost brother that leaves home. But what's often not talked about is that other brother. When Jesus spoke, all types of people came out to listen, as we read in the scriptures. In the 15th chapter of Luke, we see tax collectors, we see sinners, they're all drawn to Jesus. The religious leaders and the scribes were also in attendance, but they were murmuring and grumbling, mainly because Jesus received and fellowshiped with sinners. This parable addresses the scribes and the Pharisees. So we know that Jesus often spoke in parables. What's a parable? A parable is a story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson as told by Jesus himself. If you came out to Sunday school, you would have heard. Amen. Okay. So as we look at the parable of the lost son, I want to spend a few moments of your time, as I said, I'm not going to be long-winded today, talking about the elder brother. Amen. When we first look at Luke, we see that a man had two sons. Now that's important. Because in the parable, we know that the younger son, and I'm just going to paraphrase it for you, he goes out and he asks his father for his part of the wealth. Yes. So the father gives him his wealth. After a few days, he leaves to a far away country. There at that country, he squanders all of his father's wealth. A family comes over the land, and this younger brother's not ready for all that. Now he can spend all the money now, family. So now he's hungry, there's no food. Yes. He's penniless, yes. and there's no food. Yes. So he has to go and attach himself to a person of that country, and he starts feeding swine. Now, if you know anything about the Jewish culture, the pig is the lowest form of animal. So to attach yourself to feeding the pigs is one of the lowest jobs you can get. Amen. So he's 
So that's what he had to do. So when he came to himself, the scripture tells us, that he said, I could be asking my father for forgiveness, I can ask him for servitude, and I can return back to him. We still do not hear about this older brother. Now in verse 25, we finally see the older brother in the field. He was more likely a laborer or a hard worker. Unfortunately, he hadn't paid any attention to what's going on when he heard music from afar off. And he inquired. I can imagine that he felt that he wasn't informed of the festivities, and so he was already getting upset, which is what an older sibling would do. Yes. Me being the older sibling. So as far as he was concerned, he didn't know what was going on. He hears the music, so he inquires. Yes. Verse 26 says, he called one of the servants and asked him, what is going on at my father's house? Yeah. Now first of all, he knows better than to ask. As an older brother, he should have went to the house and inquired himself. But he's the oldest, and so he figured I can do this, and he inquires. And the servant tells him that his brother has come home and that the fatted cows have been killed. So during celebrations, during memorials, and during uh, attendance, usually re religious services, the older brother is always there on the scene. Because as the oldest child, you were there front and center with your father. But we see in this parable, the oldest brother wasn't. He wasn't there with the father, he wasn't there with the brother, he wasn't there celebrating at all. So he was forsaking his responsibility as the oldest brother to be around the father. Verse 27 says, when the servant tells him that his brother's home, the fatted calf has been killed in celebration of his brother's homecoming, look at what happens. The first thing he does is he gets angry. He becomes hostile, probably, I can just imagine in my spiritual eye, and the appearance of his hostility made the servant uncomfortable. He might have been livid to the point where he was disrespectful and rude. Now he refuses to come to the party. Uh -huh. Verse 28 says, so the father has to leave the party, leave his guest, and plead with the oldest child to come in and join the rest of the family uh -huh. in celebrating his brother's return. Uh -huh. How many of you remember that? Amen. As the oldest child not wanting to do something and your parents had to come and ask you to do it, I remember, and I'm the oldest child. The oldest brother is now angry because his father has welcomed his wayward son home with open arms. I can imagine how the father felt when his son didn't come. In my mind, he might have thought, this makes no sense. Where is my son? And in the older son's mind, he might have thought, this makes no sense. Why are we celebrating? He is not worthy to return. Verse 29 says the oldest son goes on to say to his father in a very disrespect, dis, disrespect, uh, disrespectful way. Mm -hmm. Look, all these years I've been slaving away here with you. Mm -hmm. I never neglected my duties. I never disobeyed your authority. I have been the best son ever. Mm -hmm. Or as we say now, the best son since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. You never had any problem with me, but you didn't even give me a goat mm -hmm. to celebrate with my friends. Mm -hmm. But here you are giving him the fat cat. Verse 30 says, this son of yours comes back, he's devoured all your money with immoral women, and you slaughter a calf for me? And you want me to come and celebrate? I don't think so. <laughs> Not on my watch. Yeah. Now the older brother is jealous as well as bitter. Amen. The younger brother gets the fatted calf, mm -hmm. and he can even get a goat. <laughs> this older brother shows no compassion or no love for his younger brother. And because of his self-righteous attitude, yes. we see him not even showing any love yes. for his father. Amen. He refuses to go to the party. He won't join in on the celebration of his brother, and his anger and bitterness rage on. Amen. But the father loves his children unconditionally. Yes. And he tells him in verse 31, yes. Son, you were always with me. Yes. All I have is yours. Oh, we yes. had to celebrate and rejoice for your brother who was dead is now alive. Yeah. He was lost yeah. and now he has been found. Yeah. In other words, my oldest son, yeah. your brother's relationship with the father has been restored. Yeah. He has come back asking yes. forgiveness of his sins against heaven and myself. Yes. We can see the younger brother has come to a right relationship Amen. with his father. Yes. The older brother had an unforgiving and an unrepentant heart. His heart was in the wrong place which caused him to sin. He didn't realize it at the time, but he was lost, just like the younger brother. 
Amen. before his conversion. Amen. The older brother was in a faraway country himself, yes. except he was right at home. Yes. 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 He should have been with his younger brother, rejoicing, celebrating, and he should return with his father. Yes. But instead, his unforgiving, resentful, angry, jealous, and disrespectful heart yes. was full of pride. Yes. His life as the older brother respects, uh, reflects self-righteousness, just like the scribes and the Pharisees who were attentively listening and grumbling. Yes. I'm sure as Jesus spoke this parable, the older brother had done all the things expected of him as the oldest. He followed all the rules that his father had placed on him. Yes. He was there when his father came. He was there when his father left. He was there when his brother was there. He was there when his brother left. He was right there when his brother came back. Uh -huh. But he himself was lost. Yes. So let's take a look at our spiritual condition on, today. Right now. Are you in a faraway place? Mm -hmm. All right. You can be lost with the pigs or lost in the pews. Right. Is it all about you, yourself, and you? Are you critical about everything and everyone around you? Do you come to church to worship Jesus Christ, or do you just show up and sit in a pew? Right. Do you open up your mouth to say thank you, hallelujah, praise the Lord, or do you just sit there? Do you contribute with a loving heart, your time and your finance, or do you grumble and complain about everything and everybody and what they're doing? Do you fellowship at church with the saints? Do you fellowship? Or do you just leave, walk to your car, and forget all about what was preached? What the word of God came through the pastor? What the word of God came through the singing? Do you forget all about that? When no one's looking, do you act as if you were holier than that? Behind closed doors, you act like you don't even know what the word salvation really means. It's a spiritual condition that you all think about. Do you look like this older brother? Full of self-righteous and living outside of the will of God, right. the Father. He was a sinner that needed a Savior. Yes, yes. Remember, family, you don't have to be in a faraway place to be in sin. The older brother's heart, his thoughts, and his mind were all about self. Amen. He was in a faraway place, as many people are still today. Amen. The older brother needed to have what I call, the deeper filling knows, a come-to-Jesus meeting, Amen. like the younger brother. Amen. The older brother figured that by following all the rules, being morally good mm -hmm. and being an upstanding citizen, mm -hmm. that's all he needed to do. Yeah. He figured that everything he was doing placed him in a good and regular standard oh, really? with the Father. Uh -huh. But he was so wrong. Yes. Yes. Romans 10 and 10 tells us on, that with the heart one believes yes. unto righteousness, yes. and with the mouth confession is made yes. unto salvation. Yes. Only by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and inviting him him into your heart to live, yes. truly believing that he is the son of God, that is what saving power is all about. Amen. And this is what happened to the younger brother. Amen. Proverbs 21, 21 tells us, whosoever pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, yes. and honor. Yes. God doesn't want us to be self-righteous saints. Amen. A self-righteous person has only confidence in themselves yes. and Amen. believes they can achieve righteousness through their works. Amen. But the scripture says in John 3, 16, yes. for God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten yes. son yes. that whosoever believes on yes. him yes. shall not perish but have yes. everlasting life. Yes. Do you really understand Amen. Jesus loved heaven yes. to come down to bear our sins. Yes. Right. He came, he taught, he yes. healed the sick, he yes. raised the dead, and he performed miracles. Yes. Only to be tortured yes. and hung on the cross yes. for you and yes. for me. Yes. We were not worthy, but Jesus said, Lord, send me. Yes. Yes. Family, do you understand that heaven's best died for you? Yes. Do you really understand that? You know, when I when I think about it, if we really understood that as the pastor, I would say, we be shout. We'd be running around I heaven's see. best. Yeah. Nobody else could do it for you. Nobody. He set us free. Yes. We have to submit to him. Yeah, give yeah. our lives and our total being to him. Yeah. Because Jesus loves us just that much. Yeah. Yeah. He loves us unconditionally and he yes. wants us to come to himself yes. with that same type of love. Yes. God does not want anyone to be lost. Yes. He wants yeah. all mankind all to be man. part of his. His kingdom. Yes. That is what love truly is. Yes. Let me tell you, saints, a long time ago I made the decision to follow after Christ. Amen. But before my confession of faith, I was in that faraway country. Amen. 
when I look back over my life, I was a reflection of that older brother. Yeah, right. He was me, and I was him. Yes. I really thought I had a productive life. I completed high school. I was preparing for college. I had no cares in the world. Mm -hmm. I didn't throw away my parents' substance with riotous living. Mm -hmm. I worked. I went to school. I did all the things that I was asked to do. I followed the rules and the guidelines that were placed before me but I was still lost. Amen. So as I look at the end of the story from my life now, I got up and I went to the park. In celebration because I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me, all those who are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. He's the only rest for your soul saints. He's the only one that can do it. He waited for me just like he's waiting for those of you who have not come to me. Jesus rewrote my story saints. Jesus can pay the price for this. 
Only Jesus can pay the price for our sins. And I am so grateful. I'm grateful, Lord, from now, from the beginning, from the end, to the middle, and forevermore. So I just think, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have been all that you are doing, and all that you will do. Yes, and I ask, Lord, that you continue to bless people, Father. Yes. Open up their minds and their hearts. Let yes. them be on fire yes. for the Lord. Yes. Let them be on fire, Lord. Yes. They don't need to worry about what people say, what people do, what people yes. think. They don't need to worry about who's looking from the left, Come who's on. looking from the right. Amen. They just need to be on fire. Yes. And so, we, Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes. And we ask this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. 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 